Uh, so, uh, as Steve mentioned, the talk that I'm going to give today is based, based on a uh, blog post that I wrote last year on one of the fundraising platforms that we built on the campaign. Um, and so, before I get started, I just want to show you guys some high-level numbers on the platform so that you know uh, about what I'm talking about. Um, the first thing is that the platform raised $250 million of our about $690 million online total. So, it's a decent chunk of our online fundraising. Um, it also, uh, you know, of that 250 million, it was processing 4.27 million donations. It had 81.5 million page views, uh, 17.8 million unique visits, and it did all of this over a six-month lifespan. Um, we launched it for the last six months of the campaign. Um, so I also want to give you guys a little bit of context because I think context is really important um, so that you all understand the situation that we walked into when we started at the Obama campaign. Um, the first thing is that in 2008, they raised $500 million, which is like, you know, a vast sum of money. Um, and obviously, we knew the political race this time around was going to be much, much tighter. So we needed to at least do $500 million, preferably a lot more. Uh, the second thing is that almost every media outlet at the time was reporting that we were expected to raise a billion dollars, right? So if you thought $500 million is a lot, double that. Uh, that's, you know, twice as much. Um, and to put that into perspective, um, Amazon's Q4 profits uh, last year were uh, $97 million. Um, and if you spread that out over, or if you do the math over a, a year and a half, which is about how long the campaign lasted, um, that's still just about you know, half of what we were expected to raise. So you know, we're walking into the situation where we're expected to raise twice what Amazon would raise in the same amount of time. Um, Third, we're working for the president of the United States, obviously, um, in a presidential election. Um, now, this is not a political talk at all, um, but I think it's important uh, to convey how we felt about the work that we were doing. Um, we would eventually have an opponent that, uh, you know, had complete and utter disdain for um, the poor and the working class in our country and famously wrote off 47% of them. Um, and that's obviously, uh, you know, we were not going to let somebody like that get into the office of uh, the president. Um, and obviously, everybody should know that I'm talking about Mitt Romney. Um, and the last point that I want to make about Mitt Romney, uh, and then we'll move on, I promise, um, is that this guy, like, you know, just has so much money, um, and he's just a fundraising juggernaut, right? He's a very successful businessman, and I don't think anything portrays that more than this picture here. You guys might have seen this. It made its rounds um, in the 2012 cycle. Uh, but if we zoom in here, you can see that this guy has so much money that it's, like, coming out of his ears. Do you see that? Uh, I mean, what a great problem, right? You have so much money that's just coming out of your ears. Um, and let's take a look at some of his buddies here. Like, this guy has so much money that it's sweating money, right? It's like just coming out. Uh, I can't stop it. Um, and then this dude right here, I mean, so much money that he actually eats his money, right? It's just ridiculous. Um, so obviously, I'm joking, but um, there were many fundraising quarters on the campaign where uh, Mitt Romney was actually beating us. So um, just to reiterate how tight the fundraising race was. Um, so here is an architecture diagram of the platform that we started with. Um, I was the first front-end engineer at the campaign, um, so this is kind of what we inherited. It was built by a company called Blue State Digital, who I worked for uh, before the campaign. Um, and it served our purposes really well in the beginning. Um, as you can see, it's a very simple architecture diagram. A lot of you are probably familiar with it. Um, we have the user up top. The user sends requests to a load balancer, which uh, splits requests um, off to two web clusters. Uh, first web cluster um, was, uh, there's about seven nodes running on that. Um, it was responsible for serving the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. Um, and then anytime you were on the page and actually submitted a contribution, your post request would be sent to the payment cluster, which had about two nodes on it. Um, and like I said, this served our purposes really great in the beginning of the campaign, because when you're only one developer, you do not have time to build a new platform. You kind of just have to go with what you have. So this works great out of the box. Um, it was completely hosted by Blue State Digital, so we had no control over the code. Um, it's a CMS, so you can easily publish um, uh, donation pages. You can put a wrapper on it, put some CSS and JavaScript, and make it look like um, you know, it's in brand with the campaign. Um, but as our team grew out, um, we started to focus on some of the performance problems that this platform had. Um, so we were routinely seeing about five to second, um, even longer average page load times. Um, and so we sat down with Blue State, who was awesome in, in solving some of these problems for us. Um, one of the problems was that the platform initially had no CDN. Um, the static assets and the HTML were coming right from origin. 
Um, and so Blue State um, solved half of that problem by putting all the static assets on CloudFront, which is Amazon Web Services CDN. Um, so that was great. Um, and there was also no caching on a lot of the static files. We had a lot of repeat visits, um, a lot of repeat donors. So obviously, we wanted um, you know, all of those static files to be cached if they hadn't changed so that the browser doesn't request them anymore. Um, but you know, another big problem was that the platform was, or the page, I should say, um, was very, very heavy. It had 46 requests. It was a little over 700 kilobytes in size. Um, and the problem with fixing that is that there's just so many legacy, uh, so much legacy code involved here. I'm sure you're all very familiar with that. Um, but we needed, to, we needed to solve here, right? Because if you think about the scale that we were operating on, $250 million is a lot, and uh, 4.27 million donations is a lot. So we definitely need uh, to fix this problem. Um, the obvious uh, solution here was you know, just to work with Blue State to completely rebuild the platform. Um, that would be a huge lift. It would have taken you know, probably months. Um, it's such a big project, we never even inspected it out. Um, but on a political campaign, you don't have months. You have you know, hours to get something out the door. Um, so the eventual solution that we um, decided doing, which was really key to our new platform, was um, just building out a donate API that was um, you know, very much inspired by uh, Stripe. So Blue State took their um, hosted platform, created a new controller so that we had a new URL to post to, um, and then instead of outputting HTML, they just outputted JSON. Um, and it was uh, able so that we could consume it on the front end with JavaScript, which is beautiful. Um, so here you can see the start of our um, brand new architecture diagram uh, for the new platform. We have the user up top again. Contribute.barackobama.com is the domain that it lived on, which is still up today if you want to check it out. Um, and then we have um, the Blue State Digital Donate API. Um, and that's a reverse proxy to that because these are post requests. And for security reasons, you can't do a cross-domain post request. Um, and Blue State's architecture didn't live inside of ours. Um, so the next um, you know, problem we had to tackle was what CMS we were going to use to consume this Donate API. Um, we considered a lot of options. One of them was a custom-built CMS uh, by our tech team. Um, but the front engineers wanted something that was a little more simple than that, that we could really iterate and A-B test and you know, improve the user experience and um, the conversion rate. Um, a few of us had experience with Jekyll. Um, and so we did a deep dive in Jekyll, and we all really loved it. Um, if you're not familiar with Jekyll, it's a static website generator. It's written in Ruby, um, and it's basically all just templates. The template language is um, Liquid. It was developed by Shopify. Um, and you can you know, run plugins in Jekyll, and there's a configuration file. Um, it's really, really awesome. If you haven't checked it out, you should do that. Um, so we chose Jekyll as a CMS, and then we version control with GitHub because, you know, obviously. Um, so here is um, the architecture diagram built out a little bit more. You can see we have Jekyll um, and GitHub at the bottom. And then we pushed our static assets up to S3, which is amazing. Because like, how many of you guys remember web development like in the 90s? Did, was anybody here? Like, were they doing web development in the 90s? Remember how like, super simple and awesome that was? Like, you're just dealing with HTML, maybe a few PHP includes. Super simple, super awesome. That's what this was. It was super simple and super awesome. Um, the next thing we had to worry about was uh, you know, the server, what's going to be serving this? Um, and obviously, we wanted a CDN, because a CDN is the fastest way that you can get the HTML uh, to the client. The closer the edge server is, the better. Um, so we went with Akamai uh, as our CDN um, for many reasons, but top two is because it's so flexible and it's also blazing fast. Um, so we put our static assets in a separate S3 bucket uh, from our HTML, put Akamai in front of that and then put Akamai in front of um, the HTML S3 bucket. Um, and what I mean by flexibility with Akamai is that you can set up configuration rules um, per directory. So slash donation was where all of our um, HTML lived, and that was just a pull zone to the S3 bucket. And then on the same domain, slash page was the reverse proxy to the Blue State Digital CMS, or uh, the Donate API, I should say. So even though uh, you know, we were using a CDN, we didn't use, lose the uh, complexity that we needed. Um, so actually, uh, that platform right there that you just saw was what we launched into production. Um, but we did a lot of testing on it before we launched it into production. Um, and so the results were pretty staggering. So I just want to share this with you guys. Um, the first metric that I have up here is time to paint. Um, this is my favorite metric. Um, I think it's one of the most important metrics when you're uh, measuring performance. Um, and the reason is when you're looking at page load, even if you're looking at, uh, or using, I should say, um, you know, performance principles, 
your page load time can still be a little disingenuous, because let's say that you're um, asynchronously loading JavaScript files. Those can still drag out the page load time, but obviously it's not blocking render of the page. So you really want to be looking at page load from a user's perspective. You want to see how quickly something gets on the screen. It doesn't matter if you're asynchronously loading script files in the background. Maybe the script file doesn't even change the appearance of the page, and it's just a reporting script, right? Um, so if you look at our time to paint, um, I measured this with web page tests, which if you guys haven't used web page tests, you should definitely be using it. It's um, very simple to use, and it provides you great data. You can see what I'm talking about here. So um, the first uh, film strip up top is the fast platform. And you can see that at one second, 64% of the document was complete. But we have almost you know, a completely painted page. That's a usable page that the user can start using. Um, but it's just not you know, document complete or page load because the graphics haven't loaded. So the logo and the image of the present to the right isn't loaded. But that's not really what I was concerned about. I wanted to get something um, you know, as, as early as possible on the screen. Um, so you can see we've got full page load at about two seconds. And then uh, the old hosted platform by Blue State Digital um, is at five seconds. So you know, a huge win on time to paint. Um, we also, because we stripped out all the legacy code in our platform, um, we had a 63% uh, reduction in page weight. So we went from like over 700 kilobytes to about 122 kilobytes. So that was a huge win. And we also reduced the HTTP request by 52%, um, again, because we just didn't have to deal with all that legacy code in the platform that we built. And we combined all of our scripts and CSS files, obviously. Um, but performance um, really is just a means to an end, right? Because we really just want to, uh, I should say, the, the metric that we really want to focus on is conversion rate. Um, and so we want to see, like, you know, what does all this have um, effect on the conversion rate? We use Optimizely to set up an A-B test. Um, Optimizely is another um, platform that I'm going to give you guys a plug for. If you're not using it, check it out. Um, it's super easy to use. I'm not getting paid by Optimizely. Um, super easy to use, and uh, it's you know, really, really powerful. It's like the perfect tool for a developer. Um, so we sent 50% of the traffic to our fast page and 50% to our slow page. Pages were identical in the way that they looked and they functioned. Um, and the fast page had a 14% higher conversion rate. Um, and I don't know how many of you guys do A-B testing out there regularly, but um, obviously it depends on what you're testing. But 14% is a pretty big lift, um, especially when you're talking about the scale that we were working at. Remember, this is $250 million here. So when you do the math here um, and you work with like, you know, the average contribution amount and stuff, um, the difference in money that you get from here is estimated at about $32 million, right? Um, that's a lot of money, especially in a tight fundraising race. So we knew that we had done a good job here. Um, but now that we figured out the performance, there was still uh, other parts of the platform that we needed to um, improve. So if you look at, well, I should say that the problem that we're trying to solve here is that at some parts of the campaign, we were processing about $3 million an hour, which is a pretty high peak. Um, and in, like, like I said, in a tight fundraising race, any downtime is just like completely unacceptable um, when you're processing $3 million an hour. So this platform just can't go down. Um, and here's the, uh, the architecture. Uh, you can see the weak point here, right? Like S3 is very stable. That's not going to go down, especially when it's behind Akamai. So our HTML is going to be fine, and our uh, static assets are going to be fine. But the Blue State um, digital payment processor um, is kind of the weak point here as far as um, uptime. And uh, I should mention, too, as I said earlier, is that there was two nodes there done by a load balancer. But you know, what happens if that load balancer goes out? We can't process any donations. So um, what we did is uh, the tech team on the campaign built out an identical payment processor to Blue State Digital and hosted it on completely different architecture that was all on AWS. So if you look at the bottom right, um, you can see that we have um, two EC2 regions. We put one uh, in the West Coast and one on the East Coast. Um, and then we used um, an Akamai GTM geolocator to split the load there uh, dynamically. So if you had an IP address that was uh, on the west, western side of the United States, you'd get sent to the um, data center in the West Coast. And if you had an IP address that was on the eastern side of the United States, you'd be sent to the East Coast. Um, if the West Coast went down for some reason, all the traffic would be then routed with the Akamai GTM failover to the uh, East Coast and vice versa. Um, so that system in itself was very redundant and was probably not likely to go down. But even if it did, we had completely different architecture um, hosted by Blue State to rely on. Um, and you know the same goes the other way. 
We used um, AWS uh, Route 53 weighted round robin to control how much traffic goes to each, so we had uh, load balancing at that level too. Um, that, uh, that feature of AWS is super awesome. You know, you can like, push traffic to one or the other very quickly and very easily. So if one goes down, we can switch it really quick. Um, so one thing that I really want to focus on um, that I think is like, really the, one of the key parts of this um, architecture here is the two pieces in orange. Um, you can see we have Jekyll and GitHub um, and AWS and S3. As I mentioned before, this is like, you know, a really, really simple workflow, um, but it really allowed us to iterate on the platform that we built. Um, and here's some numbers behind that. Um, and, it's, and again, it's just because um, we're dealing with static files and GitHub version control. Everything was so simple, and it's very easy to work with. Um, so there's a lot to be said for simplicity. Um, keep in mind, we're only talking about six months here. We did 1,101 front-end deploys, um, which is a lot, right? So we're constantly iterating on this, um, on this platform to make it a better user experience and make it faster. Um, we ended up writing 4,000 lines of JavaScript, um, which is a lot. Most of the you know, donation stuff was processed on the client side, so that kind of makes sense. Um, the whole site was completely responsive, so we had to deal with that and be able to iterate on that a lot um, when we had new designs. Um, and we also did about 240 A-B tests on this platform. Um, and you know, the net effect of that is that we got a 49% increase in the conversion rate on our donation pages, which again is really big when uh, the fundraising race is, race is so tight, right? Um, so that's all I got for you guys. Um, got my contact information here if anybody has any questions, but uh, thanks a lot, you guys are awesome.